Is it true that you're going to resign, Mr. Attorney General? No. Does the governor ask for your resignation? No. What do you think your chances are for re-election, Mr. Attorney General? I don't know. Did you speak on the phone with Commodore Selby? No. Is it true that your wife has had a nervous breakdown? No. I tell you, nothing new has developed. Now, for heaven's sake, leave me alone. Please, why don't you stop hounding me? Public wants to know what you intend to do about Selby. A lot of people seem to think that if Commodore Selby were a poor man, you'd have had him up before that investigating committee weeks ago. Nothing of the kind. We've used every effort to serve Commodore Selby with a subpoena. Our readers want to know how Commodore Selby managed to grab off all that state land for his own profit. I'll make him explain that to the Senate committee. But you know, as well as everybody else, that he's got a vote entered in the Honolulu yacht race. And they're leaving tomorrow. Well, a lot can happen between now and tomorrow. A lot better happen between yeah, now and yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, Good morning, Mr. Bishop. Those reporters are terribly annoying, aren't they? Oh, oh let it alone. Tell Bruce Lane I want to see him right away. In the morning paper? Oh, I guess you have. There's nothing funny about this, Lane. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not looking for sympathy. I want action. Well, I've done all I could. I sent all of my best men after Selby. They might just as well carry those subpoenas around in electric light signs. Oh, well, you know you can't just walk up to Selby and slap a summons on him. Why, he has an army of bodyguards around him like a Siamese potentate. I'm sick of hearing alibis. You've got 24 hours to serve that on Selby. I'm an attorney. I never served a subpoena in my life. You'll serve this one or look for another job. Oh. So you're making me the goat, huh? I'm going out the same ship. I'd be glad to share this taxi with you. Thanks, awfully. This is a bit of luck for us. We might have had quite a wait. It's a pleasure, I assure you. Any friend of the Selby's is a friend of mine. I don't believe we met. My name is Lane. I'm J. Montague Forsythe. Do? Mrs. Van Peel, may I present Mr. Lane? Pleasure. How do you do? Please? Thank you. Very nice of you. Commodore. A yacht can be temperamental, too. Exactly. It requires careful handling. That's why I'm going to skip a, a Lady Betty myself. Here's to the Lady Betty. Am I being toasted, Father? <laughs> There's good seat for you. There's another Betty now, you know. Betty, yeah, imagine having a yacht for arrival. Is <laughs> <laughs> Ellen? Terribly. <laughs> Good afternoon, Roberts. How do you do, Mr. Forsyth? How are you, Roberts? Hello. Hello, Roberts. How do you do, sir? Uh, may I have your name, sir? Hey, certainly. It's Lane. Oh, don't be so particular, Jansen. He's all right. Oh, he's a friend of yours, Mr. Forsyth? He's a guest of Mr. Selby's. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Forsyth. The gentleman's name isn't on the list, and I have my orders. Oh, now, that's funny. Yes, it is funny. Commodore Selby invited you. Why didn't he put your name on the list? 
Well, as a matter of fact, the Commodore didn't invite me. Oh, he didn't? No, it was Mrs. Selby. When did Mrs. Selby invite you? Mrs. Selby's been dead for ten years. Oh, you must have misunderstood me. I said Miss Selby. Is that so? Hello, Monty. Oh, hello, dear. How are you? You're just in time. There's a friend of yours here in a little difficulty. A friend of mine? Yes, a gentleman here. Do you know this man, Miss Selby? I know. I've never seen him before in my life. Oh, Miss Selby. I thought so. Come on, you beat it. Now, what do you expect me to do? Walk ashore? Who are you? I mean, what are you doing here? Well, believe it or not, I'm waiting for a taxi. Thank you. I'll tell you in a minute, Herd. Perfect. Couldn't be any better. Here comes the Lady Betty now, and she's well in the lead. Hey, Bob. Take the wheel. Steady on the clock. What are we doing, Captain? We're making close to 12 knots. Well, let her go clean full. Keep her at it. Yes, sir. How do we line up, Monty? Well, the Falcon's drawing away from the others, but we're holding her, sir. Well, uh, let me look. Are we gaining on the Falcon, Dad? Not a yard. It's giving us a close run. We've got 10 good days to shake her off, sir. Uh, we'll check her off right now. Captain, yes, break out the balloon jib. The balloon jib? Yes. Yes. Get the balloon jib. Step right. This is a pretty stiff breeze for a balloon jib, isn't it, Commodore? Do you think it's safe? You don't win races by playing safe. We'll show them a clean pair of heels now. Right overboard! Right overboard on a port bow! Help! Help! Bring her up to the wind! Stand by the lower boat! Well, look here, Commodore, we can't stop now. We've got too good a lead. One of the other boats will pick him up. I don't think it can last that long. Let me have that blanket. Here, wrap this around him. Where's that flask? It's the gate crasher. That's who it is. Here you are, my boy. No thanks. Go ahead, it'll do you good. You take it. But I don't need it. You will when you read this. What is it? A cordial invitation to appear before the Senate committee. A subpoena? A subpoena. You cheap. I'd like to give you a punch in the nose. Well, I'd like to see you try it. I've good mind to have my men. Falcon. 
He's passing us. What are you standing here for? Put about. Let's pass the Falcon. Yes, Captain. As far as you're concerned, this race is over. I order you back to port. You order? I represent the Attorney General of this state. We're beyond the three-mile limit. Must push the coastline back. According to my reckoning, we're out about two miles and a quarter. By my reckoning, you're going to Honolulu, and you're going to work your passage. Thank you, kind sir. Think nothing of it. You're a very nice girl. You deserve the best. Oh, you overwhelm me. Darling, let's get married in Honolulu. What? And have the wedding march played by ukuleles and hula girls for bridesmaids? But that's why it appeals to me. It's so different. But have you no regard for tradition? The Sobeys have always been married at St. Thomas's. Oh, I don't care what you say, Monty. We haven't gained a yard on the falcon. I didn't say a word about the falcon. <laughs> now, darling, why don't you try and relax? Get some enjoyment out of the trip. <laughs> relax. Do you realize how many times I've tried to win this race? Where people will begin to think I don't know how to handle a yacht. And the last time, just as we turned Diamond Head, we had to rip a sail. The time before, we dropped the rudder. And this year, we get off to a magnificent start, and this blithering idiot... Commodore, we're not gaining a yard on the Falcon. Who asked you? I thought you'd like to know. Well, I don't. Big pardon, sir. Beyond the three-mile limit, we always use the soup spoon. At that time, I had pulled out and left those smart Alex holding the bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Commodore, your unloading that stock was a stroke of genius. You should have seen the faces of those small town bankers. You should have seen my uncle's face. And what's that? And you should have seen my face. Oh, you stung me too, good and proper, sugar. Do you mean to imply I did anything dishonest? It's certainly not, Commodore. You were within the law. Only you pulled out with a fortune and we pulled out with headache. That's your hard luck. My father didn't ask you to buy any stock, did he? I'm not complaining, only I figured that I helped to buy your presentation to the Court of St. James last year. What do you mean, buy my presentation? I was sponsored by the Duke and Duchess of Ferncroft, friends of my father's. Must have been a very expensive friendship. Newspapers carried a story, it cost you over $100,000. That's not true. I simply repaid the Duke the money he actually spent. And uh, you ought to sue the Duchess. What do you mean? For the way she let you trip, just as you were bowing to the King. You fresh... Monty, do something. Get out of here. Well, go on. What are you standing there for? I just want to tell you, Commodore, we're not gaining a yard on the Falcon. Get out of here. That's what you get for being kind to strangers. If you'd taken my advice, we wouldn't have picked him up. You just wait. I'll fix that smile. I'll make him wish he swam all the way back to port. From here to Honolulu, I'm going to concentrate on making his life as miserable as possible. Ain't them pretty? I think it's one of them marriages. 
Maybe some of those pancakes of yours broke away and is floating around out there. Hey, did you ever try to float one of his pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's one of them optical delusions. You know, where you think you see something, and there ain't nothing there. Where did those things come from? We must be near land. You're off your course, Mr. Peterson. I've held to the course you gave me, Captain. Uh, by now, we should be 2,000 miles off the California coast. You mean to tell me those toy boats that come out here in the mid-ocean? That's the annual yacht race to Honolulu. Yacht race? Playboys at sea. I bet they've got hand crocheted sails. Get them in below and restore those crates. Broke loose again, huh? Yeah, and that's not the kind of a cargo we want bumping around. I see. All hands below. I mean now. The last guy down gets a kick in the pants. Come on. Now get down there and do some work. Restore that cargo. And if there's any of that stuff busted up, we'll fix it up. No stalling. Stow those crates back and put plenty of line on them this time. Yes, sir. Get over there and clear out that corner. Hey, stupid. What do you want to do, blow this ship up? Now get over there and give those guys a hand. Hey, Mr. Peterson. Oh, well, what do you want? Top of this crate is busted. I'll get some tools and make a new one. We're heading into a good thick fog. Put on the running lights and start the fog signal. Aye, sir. Steady. Steady it is, sir. Keep it dead on. Your coffee's getting cold, Father. I tell you, I don't want any. How does it look, Bobby? Fog sticker, if anything. What's the matter? These men want me to speak to you, sir. I think even you will admit we've all done our best. These are all good men. Most of them have families. What are you getting at? Come on, ma'am. Out with it. Well, sir, our plates are strong. We're taking on water faster than we can pump it out. The glass has been falling all day and we're in for a blow. What do you expect me to do? I can't control the weather. No, sir, but there's one thing about this ship you can control. We're carrying too much canvas. Now, if you'd unseal the motors. Unseal the motors? You know what you are saying? Those motors were sealed by the racing committee. If I touch them before we reach Honolulu, I'll be disqualified. And what makes you think we'll ever reach Honolulu? Oh, don't be ridiculous. By my reckoning, we can't be more than 300 miles from there right now. Might as well be 3,000. If that storm ever hits us, it'll crack us wide open. We're within 40 miles of Taylor Island. If you'd start those motors, we could lay over there until the storm's over. Haven't you been in a sportsmanship? You think I deliberately put my daughter in danger? Now, you men get back up on deck. You heard what I said? Get up on deck. We want those motors unsealed. What is this? Mutiny? No, sir. But this man's a lawyer and he says we're within our rights. I don't want to hear anything from him. Every one of you men signed articles and you're going to live up to them. Uh, Captain, these articles you and your men signed, uh, they're a form of contract? That's right. And uh, in these articles, did it specify that you were to sail with seal motors? Absolutely not. Commodore. You're taking a very arbitrary stand, in my opinion. Nobody wants your opinion. These gentlemen do. You're doing this for spite. You put these men up to mutiny. Mm, I beg your pardon. The only one showing signs of mutiny so far is your father. I own this ship. But this man is the captain. And those very same articles you've been talking about specify that in time of emergency, this man's word is law. There is no emergency. I think there is. You're placing us all in needless danger. Just to win a silver cup. That's my business. And the safety of this crew is my business. Whether you like it or not, we're going to unseal those motors. You are, eh? All right. Now, you men, get up on deck. 
where you belong. Hey, Mr. Silver, you're going to force I me. I told you to get out of here. I'd advise you to listen, Commodore. If you don't get out of here, all right. But you're making a mistake. Father, please put that gun away. They forced me to it. Nobody's going to tell me how to run my own boat. A fine lot of hoodlums. I think you're right about Ling. He started this whole business. I've never met anyone in my life that could upset me the way he does. I'll take care of him when we get to Honolulu. If there's anything left of him when I get through with him. I wonder if the fog has lifted any. What's the matter, Father? That's a motorboat. It's right alongside. You dirty coward! We're heading for Channel Island! You can come with us if you want to! I'll put you in jail for this! Shut off, Anne! Now we're without a crew. Well, there are three of us. We'll manage somehow. Well, of course we will. I wish that crew had some of you over it. Well, there's nothing left to do now but unseal the motors. That's like locking the stable after the horse is gone, isn't it? Oh, I'll give you a hand. I'm all right. I'll take the wheel, dear. I do now. Well, I was enjoying myself thinking you were a hundred percent no good. But I see you're staying aboard. <laughs> well, don't let it spoil your enjoyment. You know, I still have to serve that subpoena on your father. And I'm sticking right with him until we get back to California. Thanks. Now I can hate you all the more. Better be careful. You know the old saying, hatred's akin to love. Not with me, it isn't. That's fine. You had me worried for a minute. You'll have something real to worry about when we get to Honolulu. I think we'll all have something to worry about before that. The fog is getting thicker. I think we should drop these sails. I suppose you're quite an authority on seamanship, Mr. Lane. Uh, glad you asked me. You know, when I was in college, I used to spend all my summer vacations working aboard real sailing vessels. Dear, dear. Barnacle Bill himself. Aren't we lucky? Certainly are. Well, as I said before, I think we should drop these sails. on our port bow. Save 
Mr. Peterson. Aye, sir. Swing a lifeboat over here. Stand by to man the port boat. Take it easy, Commodore. Take it easy now. Just relax. From a line. Get a line. Aye. Where's the steady? I'll wait for the coffee. As I said before, Captain, uh, what did you say your name is? I told you three times, Morgan. Oh, yes. It's not the loss of the yacht, although she cost a lot of money. But it's a great disappointment not to be able to finish the race. Just when we figured we had it won. Of course. I'm not blaming you, Captain. Oh, so you're not blaming me, huh? Well, ain't that nice? I'm sure you did everything you could to avoid us. Yeah, I would have had to go to another ocean to avoid it, you. <laughs> there was only one way he could have gotten smacked. But he found it all right. I suppose you can furnish us with quarters, Captain. Sure. Tell Mr. Peterson to come below, Slim. I ask. This ain't the Queen Mary, you understand? Oh, don't apologize, Captain. I figure we should be in Honolulu in a few days. We should. If we were going that way, but we're not. What do you mean? I mean that this ship is headed for Macau. But you can drop us off at Honolulu. I said this ship is headed for Macau with no stops en route. <laughs> and what are you laughing at? Oh, something just struck me funny. Quite a sense of humor, haven't you? Mm. Now, see here, Captain. You can't Shanghai us in this high-handed manner. What do you mean, Shanghai? You spattered yourself all of my bowsprit, and I had a fish out the water, didn't I? Now, if you don't want to go to Macau, you can jump over the side all for you. This is outrageous. I demand to be put ashore. I'm Commodore Selby. I wouldn't care if you were Admiral Selby. I'm not going to change my course for you or nobody else. But I'll make it worth your while. You want to pay me 100,000 bucks? Don't be ridiculous. Well, that's what it's worth to put into Honolulu. It'll take us weeks to get to Macau. Always has. Now, Captain Morgan, we realize that if you say we have to go to Macau, we have to go to Macau. Well, what's all the argument about? Mm, just a matter of legality. We're casuals of the sea, and the law specifically states that you must put us ashore at the nearest port. Oh, a sea runner, huh? Mm, not quite, but I do know something about the law. Well, I stood by and picked you up, didn't I? And we appreciate that. But you're keeping American citizens aboard this vessel by duress, coercion, and implied threat for a longer time than is necessary. Now, Captain, I know you're far too intelligent a man not to realize that. Just a that. moment. Now, see here, my man. We're not going to temporize with you. You'll put us into Honolulu immediately or take the consequences. We know the law. Us to it. You're in the law. I'm the law here. And let me tell you something, Mr. Sea Lawyer. For a minute, I was thinking about putting you people ashore. But now you're going to a cow whether you like it or not. You meddler. Why don't you mind your own business, blundering jackass? What right have you to interfere? We've had bad luck from the moment we first saw you. Please, Captain, we're not responsible for this man's stupidity. He's not with us. He came on your ship, didn't he? Yes, but he came aboard by a trick. I made him work his way. Well, he'll work his way here, too. Hey, you. Me? Yeah, you. Come over here. Clean that room up. Whatever's laying around. You can use that cabin, miss. I think you're being very unfair, Captain. You'll regret this, sir. I report you to the American Consul the minute we land at Macau. Uh, you can report me to whoever you bloomin' well like. 
As long as you're aboard my ship, you'll do as I say. If I hear another bat out of you, I'll... Uh, where do you want these, uh, Captain? I'd like them right over there. Hey, what are you doing with my clothes? You're gonna buck up for with the second mate. With the second mate? Yeah, you'll remember the second mate. Take these men up to the guest cabin. Ah, uh, sir. This way. Good night, Father. Good night, Monty. Good night, dear. And you, Freshwater, you better get yourself a good night's sleep. And pleasant dreams to you, Captain. All right, Mr. Peterson. Come on. Prettier in the dark. I'll hear your bumps. After you, Commodore. Want to make anything of it? What? I said, you want to make anything of it. Don't be foolish. Open up some of those portholes. You'll open up nothing. What do you want to do? Give us pneumonia? Must be one of them fresh air fiends. But it's smelly in here. Now, ain't he vulgar? What'd you expect, a flower garden? Hey, pipe down. This is an outrage. The captain told you to take us to the guest cabin. Well, what does this look like? Feeding time at the zoo. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Peterson, but did the gentlemen bring their nightgowns with them? I told you to pipe down. Hurry up and turn in. You're keeping everybody awake. Uh, I'll never be able to sleep in this terrible place. Well, do tell. And you won't let nobody else sleep, neither. I was not addressing you, sir. Well, I'm addressing you. And if they don't shut your trap, I'll get down there and shut it for you. What's the matter, handsome? I'm gonna smack that guy. That's what's the matter, breaking up my sleep. <laughs> he isn't breaking it up any more than I am. Well? Well? I... Uh, thank you. Sea lilies? Yeah, but they put up an awful beef. Yeah? You should have heard the beef they put up back here. Especially the old man. Yeah? He told me he was Commodore Selby. Selby? Yeah. The way he was throwing his weight around, you'd think he had a lot of dough. Well, if that's Russell P. Selby, he has a lot of dough. And who was Russell P. Selby? One of the four richest men in the United States. Yeah? Yeah. Be funny if that old guy Ford was Russell P. Selby, wouldn't it? You wanted a sea voyage, now you're getting a real one with all the trimming. Yes, but this is a little more than we bargained for, Captain. Ah, uh, you'll be in Macau before you know it. By the way, you folks owned that yacht, didn't you? Yes, it belonged to the Commodore. Must have cost a heap of money. Well... What are you doing there? Don't 
told me to coil this line, didn't you? Well, do it someplace else. All right, Captain. By the way, how much you say that yacht cost? Oh, I should say around half a million. You're kidding. That just about breaks the Commodore, doesn't it? Breaks the Commodore. Don't be absurd, but that's hardly a drop. That's hardly a drop in the bucket to Mr. Selby. He must be related to Russell P. Selby. Related to him? He, he is Russell. Are you doing that deliberately? Hmm? What's the idea? Captain, I hate to see a decent fellow like you being taken in by a four-flusher. Four-flusher? Yes. What do you mean? The Commodore isn't a rich man. He was just a guest aboard that yacht. His name is Selby, isn't it? Oh, well, you look in the telephone book and find a lot of Selbys. I tell you, his name is Russell P. Selby. Did you call me, Marty? Come here a minute, will you, Commodore? Now you keep your mouth shut. Why, Captain, I wouldn't think of it. Uh, Forsyth has been kidding the Captain. He says you're Russell P. Selby. <laughs> I am Russell P. Selby. Now, Commodore, you mustn't say a thing like that. <laughs> this watch has my name on it. It was presented to me by Thomas Edison. That's good enough for me, Commodore. Smart guy, eh? I know class when I see it. My boy, what was your object in denying my identity? Oh, just a hunch. I thought he was a little too interested in your bank account. That's the only way to impress a fellow like Morgan's, with the size of your bank account. Oh, yes, well, sometimes it'll backfire on you. Captain Morgan wants you folks to have lunch with him. There you are. You see, it's had its effect already. Not you. Uh, you two go on ahead. I'll join you in a minute. You found out something. What is it? Please. Well, I was working in the hole this morning, and I found a cargo of guns and ammunition. Contraband. That's why he wouldn't put in a ton of Lula. Hmm. Naturally, he couldn't stand inspection. Morgan is nothing more than an outlaw. That's why I wanted to shut Forsyth up. You mean about Father? The Guasetka? Swell chance for a shakedown, isn't it? He wouldn't dare. Hmm. Nobody knows we're on board. Well, what are we going to do? Don't you let on you suspect anything. Well, don't say anything to Father. Or Mr. Forsyth. Right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Us. Today we're fellow conspirators. Yesterday you were calling me a low-down pest. <laughs> well, a woman has the right to change her mind. I'm sorry. Really? Really. as a pillow, but... That's fine, Mary. Thanks. Maybe some fresh air would do you the world of good. Perhaps if I get Monty, we can... No, Barry, please. I'm all right here. I feel better as long as I can lie quietly. All right. Well, could I get you some soup? You haven't eaten anything now for a couple of days. Then how about a nice cup of hot tea? Well... That sounds better. I'll be right back. Say, you're going to put any lima beans in this? Sure. They didn't 
bring any up. Give me the key to the locker. I'll get some. Say, you stay out of that locker. I'll get it myself. Pilot? Take us up to Kusa. Captain Morgan says it's way up a river. Kusa, huh? <laughs> I didn't think he'd put into a regular port. Well, it's all right with me. Any old place to get off this tub. It seem a little funny to get back home again and pick up where we left off. All our old friends and everything. Mm. Can't happen too soon for me. It seemed a little strange, too. Here we've been together for weeks, and I mean, we started off almost as bitter enemies. Suddenly we became, well, you know, pretty good friends. I don't suppose we'll see much of each other when we get back home, will we? I suppose not. I guess you think I'm crazy, but I've sort of grown to like this old town. You are crazy. What can you possibly like about it? Do you remember about a month ago, you told me you'd like to give me a good shaking? Yes. Well, that's just what I'd like to do to you, right now. Uh, Betty! <laughs> hey, you! Uh, did you speak to me? What are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm happy. Weren't you ever happy, Mr. Peterson? Get aft and give Bilgey a hand with that ladder. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. There it is. Put it over. All right, Bilgey. Andriel, my beloved brother, sends you profoundest greetings. He will welcome you at his Run home. Run that line out for it. Secure rest. Aye, sir. Mr. Peterson, get the sails on it. Aye, sir. All in the main. What do you think you're doing there? Yeah, on the level. 
I met her in San Francisco. She was singing in a joint. She's a very beautiful young lady. I congratulate you. Ah, uh, you guys know how it is. A fella gets lonesome every once in a while. Say, I might even turn soft and get married. Yeah. But not to Miss Selby. What's that you said? You trying to do kid us, Morgan? We've got radios out here. Why they've been broadcasting Selby's disappearance for the last six weeks. We also have newspapers with pictures. Uh, they didn't say they're on my ship. No, but I say it. You wouldn't hold on on a pal, would you? My wise brother Mandriel says, good fortune brings unhappiness, unless shared with friends. Say, I figured on cutting you guys in. Yeah, I know. Do we have to cut in the crew, too? No, it's a close corporation. Just us three. And my estimable brother, Mandriel. His home will be enriched with these charming guests. Come in. There's an American patrol cruiser off the port bow. She wants to talk with you. Come on. That's the most beautiful sight I've seen since I left California. What do they want? The usual thing, sir. Where from and where bound? I'm on the west coast of Cusa. Yes. Sir. if we picked up any survivors from the yacht Lady Betty. Tell them sure. Commodore Selby's daughter and party aboard. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Give me those glasses. Tell them you haven't seen any sign of the records of the Lady Betty or survivors. Tell all your friends you're okay. Thank you, Captain. What's the matter, Bruce? Hmm? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I wish we were going home on that cruiser. So do I. Wait a minute. What is it, Bruce? That message you just sent was a phony. Said you weren't on board. How do you know? I read the semaphore code. Now, will you be quiet for a minute, please? But why should he? Ransom. We're getting into Kusau tomorrow. We've got to get off this boat tonight. Well, that's easy enough to say. That's our one chance. We've got to get away in that small boat. That would simply be jumping from the frying pan into the fire. Anything is better than being handed over to foreign bandits. What'll we do, Bruce? Look, Betty. We'll stay on deck tonight until the crew turns in. After Morgan and his two friends go to sleep, you sneak up here. There'll be one man and the helmsman on watch. We'll take care of them. We are apt to drift around for days without being rescued in a small boat like that. We may die of starvation at first. Well, I'll get some signal rockets out of the hole. That crews will be close enough to see them.
Parker, sir. Drop them. Sure. Where do you want them? Just drop them. Betty's arms and lower into that small boat. This message is going to the Honorable Marvin T. Bishop, State's Attorney's Office. Please excuse delay, stop. Russell P. Selby, returning of his own volition to testify at Senate inquiry, stop. Kindly accept my resignation, take effect immediately, stop. Remaining Asiatic waters, extended honeymoon. 